feel me? I know without a shadow of a doubt what he says is true. If you don't see that, you'll drift through Christianity. Go to church. You'll go to Bible studies. You'll look at your Bible every now and then, but there will be no inward revelation in your soul to make you stand up against the pressures of the enemy unless the Spirit reveals Christ unto you. He said in verse number three, in his he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth, they go to prostrate, and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. See, that's sovereignty. <laughs> you can't stop me, Paul. You might as well stop trying to be against me and get with the winning team. You will not be able to stop me. My will will be established in the earth. But you see, he, uh, he recognized without clearly understanding in fullness the authority. Because he said, who out thou, Lord, <laughs> would bow down submission? I, I don't know what just happened to me, but wait a minute. I was on the horse galloping, and the next thing you know, I'm on the ground. See, that's what the Lord must do to us. Get us off the high horse and take us down. That's the position of servitude to God is on our knees, on our face, in our heart. Even if you never lay down on your knees physically, is your heart bowed down before him? He got to bring us to that place. See, many of us will fight against that. We got, we got to be humble. He said he will exalt the humble, but the proud. Wow. He, 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 he resists. He said a haughty spirit, he despises. Because you think you're somebody. In you, without me, he's saying. He's against that because he's looking and saying, do you see this? I am the maker of heaven and earth, created all things, and they are saying no to me and yes to everything else. With their time, their attention, their talents, their gifts, everything, they're using it for stuff that is worth nothing. When everything should be, listen to this word, exhausted for Christ Jesus. I should exhaust and spend all of my energy on living for him. So you got to have a revelation to go deeper into that place. Because listen, you are placed in positions and around people so that Christ can get his glory where you are out of your life. Let me stop for one second. You are in positions, whether you in school, on a job, a leader at the job, in the political arena, the leader of a church, a leader of a family, leader of whatever you are, you are in a position so that God can use you to get the glory out of your life. That's why he has to bring us to say, man, for me to live is Christ. To die is gain. Meaning Christ is everything for me. Is he everything for you? <laughs> I feel like jumping over something right now. Because listen. He has made himself everything to me. Meaning I fought against him being everything. I wanted that to still be something, though. Like, don't take that, too. But he said, yep, that, too. Because he said, I got to move everything out of my way, get that out the way, and move that over so he can sit up on the throne in my heart and reign and rule and dictate. He did that. I didn't bring myself to that. Like, oh, yeah, I'm going to just really serve the Lord and be on fire. No. I was going to do Jesus and do me at the same time. And growing in the things of God reduces the I'm going to do me. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him. And he <laughs> will 
will direct your path. See, some of us are on the wrong path because we lean into our own understanding, trying to figure it out, fix it up, turn it around. When he's saying, man, just look to me. I'll tell you where to go, what to do when you get there, what to say, what's supposed to happen. I just lean on me. We can't fight against him. Paul was fighting against him. He is sovereign whether we agree with him or not. He runs everything whether you believe that or not. He makes all decisions, nothing go past his desk without his approval, whether you agree with it, like it, or not. He is never in a place where he's scratching his head trying to figure out what just happened. He's always before everything happens. Verse 5, I'm sorry, verse 6, and he trembling, he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what will you have me to do? <laughs> See, he brings us to that. Okay, I can't, I can't kick against the pricks. I can't stop you. So what you want me to do then? Servitude. And he said, arise and go into the city, and it shall be told what you must do. So the transition, he went from who he was to meeting Christ, the transition in the soul where Christ begins to be exalted to the rightful place in our hearts comes from, listen to this, seeing Jesus Christ for yourself. you got to see him for yourself. I know we prayed about the family members being saved. The prayer must be, Christ, reveal yourself unto him. You can talk till you blue in the face. If he don't shine the light of the Holy Spirit in their soul and let them see what you're saying, they'll still be lost, as the brothers say, like a goose in the snowstorm. Can't see nothing. Don't know where you're going, what to do. But if he shine his light and they see him, see, see, that's what they didn't have to beg me to go to church no more. They ain't had to say, get up. When I saw him for myself, there was a willingness in my spirit because I knew inwardly I need him. Not they need him. Not it's for them. I need him. Got to get personal. If it don't get personal, you just go to church. Just a church goer. It's a great thing. Go to church. But you're not personally connected in your soul to Jesus Christ. The attitude that Paul had was for me to live is Christ and die is gain. <sighs> Turn to Romans 8. Turn to Romans 8. Help me, Holy Ghost. Go to Romans 8. Romans chapter 8, verse number 28. We, <laughs> that's the key word, for we know. See, you got to be convinced. <laughs> you can't be guessing. Not when the pressure is on. Not when you're back against the wall. You must know. You must be certain. You must be persuaded. Romans 8, 28. And we know all things. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Look at that next line. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He's saying if he did all of that, and all of that is true, who could be against me? Who can stop me? Who can close a door that he won't open? Who can settle me in my prayer? Like, can't nobody stop me or slow me down if I'm looking at what he said, resting in what he said, and saying no and being dead to all the lies. Get that out of here. I don't, I don't even want to hear all that. You ain't finna disturb my peace. Man, I hear you. It's all good, gone. You see, my eyes ain't never moved. I'm fixed. But the enemy's job.